The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 145. NASDAQ up 63, S&P's up 19, gold contract up $8.40, trading at 15, 12 an ounce. We got silver up 12 cents, $17.82 an ounce. Light sweet crude up 62 cents, $53.26 a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the 10 year down four ticks, 131.18. The 30 year off 17 at 164.01. And King Dollar. King Dollar uh, up, down rather, 94 ticks, trading 99.039. The euro is at 109. The yen is out here at 107 and a quarter, and the pound is trading at 122 to 1 U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? So if, if we're first, let's go. just go into the spies. I mean into the E-minis. So what you have inside these E-minis, folks, is that overnight, <coughs> oh, excuse me, folks, Overnight, what you did out here is that we got up to the highs of yesterday. You know, we had, we had, a, nice, we had a nice bounce at, uh, at 11.30 in the morning. Your S&Ps were down at a price point of 28.94. You got that bounce going all the way up to the uh, price point of 29.24, and that's where we gave it up in spades. Bottom line is that that's what we did overnight. Uh, s and start started going higher at 3 o'clock in the morning. They peaked out at... Uh, 540, and now the real bottom line is that we'll see where they want to go at this particular point because um, that's just a dead cat bounce uh, and a market looks to me that still wants lower price. And we're still in a um, potential ABC structure on the way down in all the indices. We get over and we take a look at the uh, NQs, uh, same type of setup inside the NQs. NQs out here, uh, you're talking about uh, fast and wild. It's, uh, it's all of there. Uh, the NQs, we, we yesterday at uh, 10 in the morning we were down at uh, 76.25. You got that bounce all the way up to the price point of a 77.21, and uh, gave it up in spades coming into the close last night at uh, 5:40. Also, we get to 77.19. And uh, that being said, guess what? This thing uh, in in both cases, folks, what you have is this: the the bar at five. Uh, clock this morning, 510 the Eastern time this morning. That's the bar we're into. So in the case of the NDX 100, anything under uh, 7657, uh, which is uh, 22 points lower than where we are, it'll give the whole thing up. Um, bottom line, you had a little strength there. That being said, uh, bottom line, the, I suspect we're going to be fighting this out right where we are right now for a few hours. We're going to take a look at the silver market. Silver has caught a bid and uh, uh, it's getting up to this uh, price point that's uh, really important. We'll see whether it can hold. Uh, it's, it's got like 10 pennies away from it. You're at 18 bucks right now. You're at 17.81. We hit 18. Uh, the, the number is that, uh, actually, the number is 17.85. You get inside 17.85 and you get some action. Uh, right now, you got it up 11 cents. And intraday out here, yeah, it's not. Pull this back a bit. Yeah, uh, so intraday, actually intraday, you can retest the 1775. Yeah, 1775, you get a retest of that area. Gold, we take a look at the gold market out here. Uh, gold right now uh, trading at 1512.30, and this just continues sideways. I like the volume on gold right now. This is a lot of volume for uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. We hit uh, uh, 170. 8,000 contracts. That's big contract volume. Notes and bonds, bottom line, they still want higher price. Uh, they, they just refuse to back off. Uh, you got an inside day out here happening today. We're at 131.18. What we did out here yesterday is that you rejected lower price. You had lighter volume. Bottom line looks to me like this is building cause to get up into this uh, September high. Uh, we had the 10-year uh, 
Right now, we are yielding, let's see, 10, not in, 10. Okay, so the 10 year right now, that one. We are yielding 1.55. We hit 1.52 this morning. And I believe we hit 1.52 two days ago, too. Yeah, so you're hanging out here. You're, build, you're building cars. This thing's building cars right now and the yield to go after the low of September, which is at 1.42. And you got to remember that the all-time low is 1.31. And the way the uh, note and bond market actually is trading out here, it looks to me like, uh, number one, you're going to go after that number. The real kick is going to be is that, uh, is that number going to be able to hold? King dollar. What do we have with king dollar? King dollar just continues to basically stay at these highs. Uh, pretty phenomenal uh, that the metals market is still holding up when king dollar has, you know, been up here for quite some time. Uh, the number in king dollar you want to keep, keep your eye on is going to be 98,932. That, that number there, we got under that number last week just for basically a day, got above it again. And above that number, that's, that's a higher trading range. That's how this shakes out. So um, you had free drives to the top. There's no doubt about that. It, it came off of that. Uh, hasn't negated that type of pattern yet. Uh, but bottom line is that you're going to need lower price and you're going to need volume come into that market uh, if, in fact, King Doll is going to give it up at all. Some of the higher volume equities in this market, and I expect what you're going to see out here today, you know, bounce. You can have a bounce at light of volume, and I do expect we're going to give it up in price as we're coming into the close out here <clears throat> as we actually go through the trading day. You get U.S. Steel down 78 cents. That's trading at $10.25. Apple's up a buck 95. You got Microsoft up a buck 89. Uh, you got Snap off 13 cents. Let's go over and take a look at U.S. Steel. This this stock's one big mess. Um, no matter how many tariffs they put on this this thing is yeah. This is going after its swing low. The swing low it's going after is 1017. We hit 1019. Oh, this is going to be a monster problem. So check this out. This already has 8 million shares, and your swing point only has 17 million. Uh, this is this is going to this is going to be a breakdown. One second, let me pull this back. Yep, you're going to go to lower lows, and you get an expansion of volume. Put this on. Yep, and uh, we're at. This is on its way to 841. That's what it looks like. We'll see what they said. So 841 is the number on that baby. Um, Okay, so they announced uh, executive management changes. Uh, U.S. Steel, let's see what they have to say. Uh, current U.S. Steel chief financial officer announces his intention to resign. Oh, there you go. That's always a freaking problem, folks. CFO. Uh, U.S. Steel appoints uh, Christine Braves as his next financial uh, officer. U.S. Steel, they announced Kevin Bradley as the former company's intention to resign his position of chief financial officer effective November 4th. Bradley remain uh, with the company as executive vice president and advisor to the CEO through the end of the year to focus on financing activities, including a couple of the big projects that they have going. That is always a problem. You know, your CFO, uh, bottom line, knows the cash flow, knows the business, knows the projects, knows all of the above, and a lot of work in the CFO. No two ways about that. Dow, Dow Industrial is up 125, NASDAQ is up 56, S&P is up 17 and a half. We'll come right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we have the uh, Dow Industrials right now trading. Be up in a second. Sorry about this. Trading. Where are you? You get you get the Nasdaq futures up 57. We'll get the rest of that. Oil, oil market out here, folks. We're going to get these uh, oil numbers coming out at 10:30. Right now, oil's trading out at 53.07, and I suspect what you're going to see out here is that. Uh, we're probably going to get a little bit more oil than the market is thinking right now, and this thing wants to get into lower price. Now, uh, there's no, no doubt about it. Oil has been on a one-way uh, move down since you had those Saudi oil fields uh, get attacked. You know, uh, the day they got it, the Friday before they got attacked, oil's trading at $54.38. They got attacked on Saturday. Sunday, oil opens up at uh, 62 and goes all the way up to uh, 63.89, and then just gives it up in spades in a huge way. Um, you know, it's building, it looks to me like you're building cause in order to blow out this bottom here. So it's going to get really intriguing watching how this shakes out. Uh, let's see, I believe they're looking for, you got about a build of a, let's see, what to watch. Let's see what they're looking at. I believe they're looking for a build of about 100,000 or 150,000. Uh, so you get the start of refining maintenance season stepping into high gear around now. Uh, we should see a utilization come off even more. That would be mean additional barrels of crude available everywhere from the Midwest to the Gulf Coast. Well, high levels of refining maintenance might be bearish for crude. It's the opposite for gasoline and dis uh, diesel. Refineries not only doing planned work could get a bump from improved cracking margins if we see declines in fuel Similar to what the API reported yesterday, margins on gasoline production as measured by the spread between WTI and RB Rebob futures, um, RBOB futures have been creeping higher going into the fall. Gasoline demand is down across the U.S. and the need for fuel trimmed by the Rocky Mountain snowstorms. Snow's here, man, pretty wild. Um, you get ship owners are expected to chase more diesel in the next few months to cut sulfur content for their fuel. Bottom line, we'll see where this uh, whole baby's going to go. If we go take a look at the uh, XLE, yeah, XLE has been basically leading this uh, baby 
uh, south also. You know, six months ago, the XLE is at uh, $68. You're at 56 right now. Uh, yesterday, you came down with big volume yesterday. I mean, we did uh, 20 million shares. The swing point you're going into has 21 million. You don't want to see that uh, if you're bullish uh, in the XLE or those uh, big, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> integrated oil companies. So the way that this is set up right now is that that's hammering. Uh, it, it, this is going down to the lows of uh, 2018, which is 53. Right. The lows of 2018 are 53.36. The high of that is 58. Right now you're at 56.50, and you have been hammering into those uh, levels with some real volume. Netflix, go, let's go take a look at Netflix out here. Netflix been having a hard time holding price. You're down $4.10. Uh, it's not that bad uh, compared to uh, analyst-wise out here. They, they're, they're digging into it. Let's see. So you got uh, Netflix uh, price. Tiger's price was cut to 265 from 330 at Rosenblatt Securities, which cited unprecedented competition uh, that the video streaming company was facing, including from Apple and Walt Disney. Well, the bottom line is that, yeah, you cut it from 330 to 265. Well, guess what? You're trading at 265 anyway. That's, that's pretty intense, man. Uh, so that's what, 45, 50, you cut it $65 overnight. So yesterday you thought the stock was at 330, and today you think it's at 265. And it's trading to 265. Stock's, stock's worth what the price is, folks. The price is 266 right now. If we take a look at Netflix, you put this on a, a little bit longer chart time frame, and what you're going to see here is that you're coming down to the end of the the bottom of the consolidation, which is 231. And you break 231, bottom line, you're going to go right back to 195. That was the breakout area from January of 2018. And it, the bullish part. And, well, the bearish spot in Netflix is that it has no volume on the way up. The bullish spot in Netflix that has no volume as it's coming back into its breakout area. You know, we came down uh, last month with uh, 176 million shares, and you went topside with 238. So you might start finding a bottom somewhere around 231. That's still 30 bucks down from where we are, and I do expect you're going to get down at those levels. So that, that no doubt is a, a big level on the way down. We go take a look at the. Uh, let's go take a look at Nvidia. So Nvidia that had a huge failure two days ago. Came down yesterday. Had juice on the way down. And here you go. You're gonna you're gonna bounce out here today. Let's see. Looks like you're gonna bounce with light volume. Eleven million. Well, that's a close call actually. We, we've we've done two million so far. So we'll see where it can hold price. Nvidia would have to hold one hundred eighty dollars and sixty four cents. We got over it today. You're at one eighty fifty two right now. If we go take a look at those SMHs, because what no doubt what happens is that the SMHs take take you up, take you down. SMH, that's the chip sector, of course. That's, I see. What you're there we go. Okay, so that's up two bucks, one eighteen. Yeah, you went down yesterday with six million shares. You're up with. 600,000 this morning. So that's saying the sector in general is having a hard time holding price. You're going into 13 million. The high of that 13 million is 119.91. And it doesn't look to me like it's going to uh, basically get any traction there. Small caps. Small caps still the weakest indice out here. Small caps. The way these small caps are set up, folks, this is going to be a, a monster. Is that these babies are set up to go after the December 2018 low. You're right at the cuffs right now. And the, the cuffs that we're talking about is breaking the consolidation that we've been in going all the way back to October 2018. So you come down here a few times. Bottom of this consolidation is 144.25. You're at 147.17 right now. We got last week down to the uh, 144.93. And you had an expansion of volume. We did 122 million shares versus 94, versus 101, versus 79. Most times what that means, folks, is that you're going to get down there, number one. You're going to blow that thing away. You blow that consolidation away. And guess what? December 2018 is game. And in the larger basis, watch, if you put this back, in the larger basis, it looks to me like that's the large consolidation that 
we're going to be in and we're going to stay in for quite some time. You know, you take a look at this, you know, the small caps, 173, they topped out in August of uh, 2018. And, you know, you go right back to where we went uh, topside from in uh, November of 2016. That'd be pretty wild, man. It would make sense, though. Yeah, that would be a consolidation that you're in. We've already been in it uh, since the breakout area. Yeah, that's three years. Time's a funny thing, man. Uh, but that's, that's what happens. That's what you need, actually, for higher price. We went up so exponentially. You break, up to, you break out to a new zone. You get up in the zone. Monster consolidation. Three, four, five years going sideways. Dow. Dow Industrial's up 157. Nasdaq's up 65. S&P's up 21. We'll come right back. Folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Okay, so uh, crude inventories uh, rose 2.93 million barrels. Your gasoline inventories uh, fall 1.2 million barrels. And uh, bottom line is that I, I get some delayed quotes here, but it doesn't look like you're going to get much movement uh, inside this market. Well, at, at this particular point. Um,
Energy shares still can't get any traction out here. Bottom line is that uh, we, have, we have plenty of uh, energy, folks. <laughs> there's, there's, it, it's pretty amazing when you, you go back 10 or 20 years uh, and then you see uh, how many more people we have, number one. And uh, bottom line is that there's energy everywhere. And there's this oil market. Uh, when, when you take a look at this oil market, this oil market looks to me flat out that it wants to try to bust this 52 uh, area. If we pull this up for a second... What you're going to see is that you've been, we've been down here a few different times. Uh, yeah, we've been down here since, let's see, since June, June 19th. Um, you know, the bottom of this is at $50.48. Uh, we were down there uh, basically four days ago. We were at fifty ninety nine, And, uh, you know, we'll see how this uh, baby shakes out. We're definitely, you know, the, the bottom line, as you can see, we're out of driving season. There's no two ways about that. Um, we get snow coming in. Bottom line is that I suspect we're going to build a bit more cars uh, in order to get down into lower prices. The, uh, we got to take a look at some of the uh, big dogs out here because, uh, of course, uh, with holidays coming up, you know, Amazon out here, uh, Amazon hasn't been able to hold price, folks. Uh, what you have with Amazon, you got a high volume low that's laying out here from June. It's uh, approximately, let's see, yeah, we're. $45 away from it. And would you have Amazon is up $17.20 today. And I suspect that we're going to see out here, this is going to be, a, this is, Amazon's actually going to give us some good information out here today. Uh, and what the good information will be is yesterday you went low with 2.6 million. If this stays up $15 today, uh, what you'll get, what you'll get is that that's building cause for, to get after that high volume low out there. It's, 1672. Google. Google's in a better shape uh, out here. Uh, Google's laying out close to its highs. You're, you're 1200 bucks. The last six months, 1289 was the number. And, uh, you know, it was subtle yesterday, but Google did have uh, some volume on the way down. Uh, as, as a pop tire, you know, uh, you, you've got light, lighter volume. Microsoft, who has been the king dog out here and has been for quite some time, uh, is hanging at highs. And Microsoft actually looks to me like it does want to go test its all-time high, which is 142.37. That was generated out here, let's see, uh, September 19th. Big number. Uh, PG&E, uh, let's, let's, let's pull this up. PG. It's amazing that this thing is bankrupt and they're still, there we go, they're still trading out at $11.00. You know, you're down the last uh, three months from 23. Let me pull this back a bit. But they are basically shutting the electricity off. Ooh, that's nasty. Yeah, so this high volume low is going to get tested at $5. So PG&E, uh, let's see. They, they have cut power to uh, half a million customers in the first phase of the biggest ever intentionally blackout to keep power lines from sparking more blazes. The shutdowns in Northern California began overnight as dry winds leave the region. High risk of fire, more than 2.7 million may be uh, eventually affected uh, by the orchestrated shutoffs based on city estimates and the average size of the U.S. household. The, uh, look at that. That's, that's amazing, actually. Uh, the undertaking is key to PG's strategy for, pre for preventing power lines from sparking another deadly and costly um, fire. Never before has California utilities intentionally cut power to so many people for their own safety. Um, Big number. The shutoff will occur in three phases, eventually impacting almost 800,000 homes and businesses, including the San Francisco Bay Area and Napa Valley. The second one's going to occur at noon their time, uh, which is uh, 3 o'clock our time, and that's going to bring down 234,000. The last phase is going to be conducted uh, for the southernmost portions of PG&E, uh, impacting 42,000. You know what's going to be wild about this is that, I mean, how, how do you end up planning on a continual basis uh, if your electricity is going to be shut down? Pretty wild. Uh, Genrac. Let me go pull up Genrac for a second. Because it's... it's I can't find, can't find it right off the bat. Uh, because... I suspect, you know, you start, well, I mean, I, I can, I'm, 
that. Thank you. Okay, G G N R C G N R C. So, oh no wonder I look at this. Oh, it's a monster. Holy cow! This is up six dollars. Yep, totally makes sense because what you do have here is that 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 is uh, if this is the first and they are gonna basically bring down that much electricity, everyone's gonna get a gen rack. Look at this chart, holy cow. This uh, last December, you're at $45, you're at 82, and let me pull this back. Yeah, you're, on, you're at highs, you're at almost not all time highs. Uh, this is gonna get a lot of business, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. So they, this year, they expect to take in $2.2 billion, $577 million, uh, this quarter. They get, they're growing internationally by 57% on a three-year basis, on, uh, in the U.S., 9%. They very well are going to get a lot more than uh, 9% uh, when this is going to be the first of many shutdowns. Uh, what's going to be really intriguing here, when I read this article last night, is that what you— not the large commercial businesses that are getting shut down um, just because they're, they're not in the area of where this is. You start getting the large commercial businesses shut down, meaning in Silicon Valley, you're gonna, uh, they're going to have to bring in some monster generators. And I'm not quite sure whether uh, that's Genrock's business, but uh, bottom line is that generation uh, in general, uh, I suspect, is going to go up dramatically. I mean, in a monster way. No two ways about that. XAU, HUI, inside the gold market, still hanging tough out here. If we go take a look at the uh, XAU first, XAU right now is down 48 cents. We got out uh, to 92.58. Now, when we're looking at this yesterday, we needed more volume coming in this in both the XAU as well as the HUI. Oh, I like it. We got it. You got volume as you pushed higher yesterday, 33 million. Prior day was 25. That's a good setup. Okay, so HUI, let's go pull this up. Because what happens with the HUI as well as the XAU, you don't get the volumes until after the market's closed. Well, it's actually three or four hours after the market's closed because they don't trade. They, they, they basically compile the problem, the volume. Same with the uh, gold bugs index. We had an expansion there too. We did 20 million versus uh, 17. That's, a, that's, that's what we need as we're uh, clawing out higher price. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow, Dow Industrials up 150. NASDAQ up 67. S SP's up 21. We'll come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow is up 150. Nasdaq's up 66. S&P's are up 21. And if you want to see, folks, okay, this is, like, just pretty wild. I mean, most of us know this. But when you actually put this in front of you and see what these large companies are actually getting away with, um, it's pretty sad. And what I'm talking about is unfunded pension liabilities, okay? We wonder why people go out of their minds that large companies are making money and have made money hand over fist, and then they can basically get around a couple pretty large loopholes and not fund the pension liabilities. You know, I was talking about this yesterday, the aspect of GE, uh, you know, they basically froze their pensions. But when you see these numbers, and it's not just GE, and you see what they actually can get away with, it's, it's pretty amazing. So... What this is all about, all across America, unfunded pensions have become the norm. Even now, a decade after the financial crisis, the largest plans face a shortfall of $269 billion. That's right, $269 billion. So you get a picture of something. If, in fact, the company goes BK, what ends up happening is that the government has a program. But guess what? You're not getting the pension that you basically were promised. Okay, that's how that, that thing shakes out. And, in fact, it's a lot less. Uh, but wait till you see these numbers. Okay, so here's the numbers of large companies that are falling short. So GE is, is right up at the top, okay? But watch what happens here. They have an unfunded liability to their employees of $22 billion, with a B. And you can see when you, this little chart here, they have the, the assets versus the liabilities. When you put that up there, you can see that bottom line is that GE's assets, okay, a $69 billion. Their liabilities are $91 billion. Okay, so we broke, right? Boeing, look at the next one, Boeing. Boeing, uh, bottom line, $15 billion, you know. Exxon, $12.9. Lockheed Martin, $12. General Motors, $11. IBM, $8. Those are all very large, quite, uh, large numbers, folks. Um, and the real question is going to be, uh, you know, out of that list right there, I mean, the only one that I'd, I'd say that can go south is good old GE. Let's go, to, let's go to Jim in Palm Harbor. Hey, Jim, what's going on? Hi, Tom. Um, I have to take a minimum required on an inherited IRA, and TIAA Bank lets you take an American Eagle as a distribution, but... We're talking $50 over spot plus a $20 delivery. I, I feel uncomfortable buying a gold eagle for $15.75, $15.77. Um, I'm just wondering if that's a smart decision at that price, because I've been actually waiting to add to positions, but not at, not at this price. I would just call a couple dealers. That's not a lot of money for a, uh, 
you know, an eagle's always going to run thirty to fifty dollars on a a hit. Um, yeah. Now your your position that we're just consolidating here. We're we're what would what's your next target? I, I did not miss that if you were talking fifteen eighty two or sixteen eighty. The, the the larger the larger target is going right for this. Here, let me pull it up right now. We pull this back. Like you know, you're talking seventeen fifty or something. You're talking the swing point going all the way up to October of twenty twelve. Okay, that's good. Uh, another interesting thing, this is going back, I can't believe time has flown that way, but four years ago, Everbank, now TIA Bank, offered that five-year precious metals uh, CD, and it actually comes due in August of uh, 2020, which isn't far away, so it'll be very interesting to see what the compound will return will have been wow. over that five-year period. Actually, the timing couldn't have been better when they introduced that four years ago. That's wild, man. Here, let me look at that for a second. I remember that. One second. He's... August, August of um, four years ago. Wow. Come on. Because the, the maturity is August of 2020. Yeah, right. Confused. Oh, here it is. Okay. So, geez. And remind me, how did this, how did that one work again? Um, there was a percentage of, of precious metals that compounded every year. Yeah. Um, and then it reset every year, too, right? That's right. Right. Okay. So you, it wouldn't be a total. It would just be a compounding. So it could go up and down. Yeah. So issue, issue date was July of 15, maturity okay. date between July and August of 2020. Um, July 15. Okay, let's do this. Okay, this is pretty cool. July 15, we're dealing with 1,000. July. And actually, it was gold, silver, and copper one, one third, and it was capped at a forty-five percent upside on each yeah, July individual 16, precious metal. July sixteen, thirteen, forty-seven. So that's a good number. Then let's go from July sixteen to July seventeen. Okay, so you got a little loss on that one. So that one we go from thirteen seventy-six, twelve thirty-two. That's not bad. But then it resets again, July. 2017. That's going to be the same price. So in 18, you don't do anything, but 19, you get a score. Yeah, that's going to come out good, man. That's interesting. Okay. I'll keep you posted. Yeah, do that, so, man. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up, man, because that's that'll be it. So the last, yeah, yeah, this this last year, uh, but this you got. If we stay where we are, this is a huge. Well, the first year was a huge expansion. Second, little downdraft. Third, flat. Fourth, huge. Right. Well, thus far, right. it's huge. Yeah, exactly. So pretty we, cool. We shall see. Yeah. Where this, whether this next run, we're going to be at from fifteen fifty going up or going down. Thanks for your time. Have a great one. Have a Have great a one, one, man. Have a safe one. Dow, uh, Dow, uh, right now up one sixty seven. You get the Nasdaq up seventy two. S and P's are up uh, uh, twenty two. And uh, bottom line is that uh, you, you get a market that you get a bounce going out here, and it is a uh, contraction of volume, uh, pretty dramatically too. We've done 13 million right now, and the spy and the yes, they come down with 101 million. Okay, so we're talking about uh, big numbers, and that, that to me, uh, bottom line still says that this ABC structure on the way down is still in place. Um, you know, this is you got to remember it's uh, it's only Wednesday too, and what what does happen is that uh, overnight, uh, I like to see these bounces in a market that uh, keeps selling off. Dow Dow Industrials right now up 158. You get the Nasdaq up 70. S and P's are up 22. Let's go inside the Dow Industrials, uh, looking at the strength versus the weakness out here, and what we have out here this morning. Is you have you know, we're up 157 points. Visa's putting 19 positive points. Microsoft 13. United Health 12. Taken away from it. Johnson Johnson 17. Visa. I mean uh, Verizon uh, 3.7. Inside the NDX 100, the strength versus the weakness. Uh, strength is AMAT. United Health. Yeah, United Airlines. Align Technology. Weakness. Netflix. Alta Salon. That's about it. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow Dow is up 144, Nasdaq's up 67, S&Ps are up 20. JP Morgan, folks, you want to watch the financials out there because the financials already have not been able to hold their highs. If we take a look at JP Morgan, we got up to uh, 113.16, you're at 112.52. And what it did, it just went into the downdraft of yesterday, uh, gave it up, and the financials have been also leading on the way down. You know, the, We went down with big volume yesterday. JP Morgan had 11 million shares. Uh, what JP just tried to do today is get over the high of yesterday. Couldn't handle it. You're going to have lighter volume. That's building cause for the way down. Bank of America, same type of setup. They're all set up the exact same way. The reason I'm bringing it up right now is that these banks, um, you know, it, we get the interest rates going lower, you know, you know and, and that hurts them. Uh, but what does happen is when these banks start going south, man, they can go south pretty quick and they can take the market down pretty quick. Uh, yesterday, Bank of America, we did $58 million on the way down. Uh, you, you, we got to 27.97 today. Uh, right now, you're trading out at the 27.85. If we look at the whole sector and we go to the XLF, because of course then you get Berkshire Hathaway in the middle of it. Uh, same type of setup. Uh, anemic, uh, actually uh, down yesterday. We were down on the 36 million. And let's go to Berkshire BRK and just go look at Berkshire anyway and see where Berkshire is at right now. So you get Berkshire. Right now, trading at a price point of a 205.13.
Same setup, too. Same setup. Yeah, he had, he had, what happened with Berkshire? Berkshire's so weak, it, it couldn't even get over the highs of yesterday. Uh, Berkshire came down with 4.1 million shares. You got an inside day out here today. Stay right there, folks. We get the uh, fast market think of swim coming up next. Then we get our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back. Uh, Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, Dave White. I'll be back this afternoon. Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one. Dow, Dow up 140, NASDAQ up 67, SP's up 20. Come on.